This video is a narrative of a bicoronal resection for a meningioma. The patient is positioned supine with their head neutral and elevated. Cranial fixation is obtained via a Mayfield clamp with the pins placed vertically and as posterior as possible in the tempora parietal region bilaterally. Perioperative antibiotics are administered. If stereotactic navigation is used, in this case frameless, then registration is done at this time. The surgical region is minimally shaved and skin incision is marked from zygoma to zygoma along the coronal suture. Depending of specific case characteristics, a modified bicoronal incision may be performed, limited to the superior temporal line on the side contralateral to the lesion. The surgical field is then prepped and draped in usual fashion, including sterile towels, ioban, and a craniotomy drape. The forehead down to the eyebrows must be included in the surgical field. A linear incision is made from superior temporal line to superior temporal line. If paracranium is being harvested, care must be taken not to cut through this layer and stay just deep to the gallia. Rainy clips are placed to reduce scalp bleeding. Then incision is then completed as marked towards bilateral zygomatic arches. The skin and soft tissue from the superior temporal line to the zygomatic arch are carefully incised and divided down to the temporalis fascia so as to preserve the superficial temporal artery. The temporalis fascia is left intact. Again, rainy clips are applied to reduce scalp bleeding. At this point, the scalp is retracted forward to expose the frontal skull. Perforating towel clamps and rubber bands attached to Layla bar apply tension and maintain expose. The surgeon must always be cognizant of external pressure on the orbits and should take measures to minimize potential complications by erasing the Layla bar and removing unnecessary drapes in that region. If paracranium is being harvested, this layer is left down while the scalp is retracted forward, using blunt dissection and Metzenbaum scissors to separate the layers. Then once the scalp is fully retracted, the paracranium is sharply cut posteriorly and along the superior temporal lines laterally, then mobilized as an intact sheet with an anterior vascularized pedicle. The paracranial graft is protected with wet white sponges until needed later in the case. Based on the specific lesion location, a planned craniotomy is outlined with two slots across the superior sagittal sinus. A high-speed drill to perform the craniotomy. The bone flap is carefully elevated to preserve dural integrity. Care must be taken to not injure the superior sagittal sinus. Gel foam and cottonoids are placed over the sinus. The bone edges are waxed and meticulous hemostasis is obtained. And dural tenting sutures are placed. The dura is opened laterally using a 4.0 silk suture and a leaven blade and then extended to form a flap that is opened towards the sinus. The dura must be opened sufficiently right to the edge of the sinus in order to expose the midline and fox cerebri intradurally. The dural edges are tented over cottonoids to maintain a dry operative field. Wet sponges and towels are placed at the edges of the surgical domain and the Greenberg retractor system is assembled. Exposed brain is protected with telpha and or cottonoids. Closure begins after meticulous intracranial hemostasis is obtained. At this point, a primary dural closure is attempted. The dural stay sutures are cut, and a cottonoid is placed on the brain surface below the dural edge to prevent blood from collecting in the subdural space. The subdural space is filled with irrigation prior to the placement of the final stitch. Any discrete bleeding on the dural surface is handled with bipolar cautery. Likewise, epidural bleeding is stopped with a combination of flow seal, gel foam, and bone wax. 
a central tenting stitch is placed and a dural substitute is laid over the dural surface. The bone flap may be reattached in numerous ways. Our preference is to use metallic implants with cap plates over the slots and two long links laterally to attain solid four-point fixation. The wound is generously irrigated to remove debris and devitalized tissue. The scalp is closed with 3.0 visceral stitches at the galleal level and staples are non-reabsorbable suture to reapproximate the skin edges. The wound is properly dressed with bicotracin ointment, sterile gauze, and head wrap.